Hey guys, so today we are joined by David S. Nevis, uh, CEO and founder at Shift Avenue, and also someone who I consider to be very influential in the cybersecurity and cloud computing space. So David, nice to have you joining us today on the CyberJ show. Thank you very much and good morning. Uh, nice to be here. Okay, great. And I look forward to our conversation. I know those who are um, individuals who will be listening to us will definitely find value in what you have to share. I know mm -hmm. though, is a, based on your experience, um, you would have had a lot of experience and value to share to us, especially in helping those who want to take their career along this cybersecurity or cloud computing path. But before we uh, you take us on that journey, can you share with us just a little bit about yourself? Yes, um, so I'm I'm David, David Das Nevis. Um, I'm living close to Munich, 36 years old. I have a dog and a wife. Um, and um, I'm almost 15 years in IT. Um, I would call myself a typical millennial. So I've been growing up with I, um, I computers very early. Uh, my first computer was a C64, good old times. Um, and um, I think the first computer um, I had with six years. So I started young. <laughs> sure, exciting. I mean, as you mentioned, that I remember my first experience. I mean, <laughs> with a computer, it was all uh, black and white dust from. I think my first game playing. I think it was. Um, I think it was Mario or something mm -hmm. like that. But that was a way long time ago. I mean, <laughs> when PCs were using. I mean. I mean, Pentium 2 chips and all of those things. I mean, these uh, millennials now would not have an understanding or an idea as to what I'm talking about. I mean, when you needed to go onto the internet, you would click on a dial up modem and you go away and you wait <laughs> until <laughs> before you could actually browse. Yeah. So, yeah, it was fun times then to where we are now. Exactly. Uh, very interesting, though. And for me, I believe that. We all have a story behind our lives. Mm -hmm. So when you look at where you are now in terms of your career, can you tell us the story behind your journey that has yeah. uh, pretty much taken you from where I mean where you are now? I mean from where you started your journey to where you are now. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I mean, um, for me, it was actually a very interesting journey. I, I started um, after school, um, I jumped into economics, um, recognized very quickly economics was not the thing I wanted to do like on a daily job. I was not bad at it, but um, um, so um, I thought, okay, maybe I will just stick to the things I'm doing on a daily job, um, which is computers. And I jumped directly into a, an apprenticeship. So I... Um, did an apprenticeship for software development and software architecture. I had a really good first company uh, because they, they they directly gave me a lot of responsibility. So they told me, hey, David, you are now the software developer, software architect, you are the project manager, you are also the support guy, and you are also speaking with the customer. Have fun. Um, but this was really um, the good thing because um, it was out of my comfort zone. I needed to learn a lot. Um, and um, working out of the comfort zone is was really helpful for me to grow. So I started learning very quickly. Um, after, um, in total, I would say six years, um, I recognized, hmm, I'm good at software developing and software architecture, but I don't know if I want to do this forever. So I was in this tough situation and the, I, I know many, um, I'm speaking also with many mentees that I have. Um, and this is, this is the part where you also need to move out of your comfort zone. So you know you are more or less okay with the current situation, but you are not fully happy. So you are not passionate or you are not, um, um, uh, not really happy in your current job. And then you need to really go out of your comfort zone and take the next challenge. This is really important. This is what I'm telling all of my mentees, and I did it. Um, so I moved over to um, Ingolstadt, um, and then I started working in the escalation support. So 
totally different area. Um, so instead of being afraid when the telephone rings, so normally I was not speaking a lot with the people, um, I needed to directly jump into the phone calls and um, it was escalation support. So um, these were also the moments where um, uh, people were um, crying at me or yelling at me, hey, um, um, 20 systems are not working, we cannot produce any cars anymore, um, this is costing us 1 million euros an hour, you need to fix it now. <laughs> and I was like, okay, um, this is a different kind of stress I haven't been seen before. After a short time, um, I went um, to my manager and I told him, hey, um, uh, we are totally exhausted here. We are like 14 people. All of us are uh, working on a daily job. Um, and um, um, how would it be if we start automating the things here? You know, I'm software developer. I can automate everything here very quickly. Um, and then he just told me, yeah, well, it doesn't sound too bad. What time or how many time do you need? And then I asked like, okay, give me like two weeks off, like off from the daily job. Um, and then um, I will start um, to write the scripts which are helping us in automation. And things went on um, and started to getting really crazy. So we started with one script, another script, more scripts. Then we started with a knowledge base. We helped like the team, we structured the team. So we had like the, the, the thought leaders. They were like investigating um, the issues and trying to automate it. Then we had um, like execution people, they were just um, executing the scripts and working on the daily job. And we had also the, the people who were supporting us, uh, us in creating um, the knowledge base um, and the information. And um, it went more and more and it was like a feedback loop. The more time we invested into automation, the more time we had for research and for investigation. Um, and um, at the very, very, very end, I can tell you, this was my fun story, we increased SLA over 2000%. This means like um, we were playing like ping pong the whole day, <laughs> um, which was fine. Um, and um, um, uh, at some point in time, we were also able to find the root causes for the toughest issues. Um, and this was also the time I was working um, close with Microsoft and with Computer Center. Computer Center is a consultancy company in Germany. Um, and um, um, afterward, I jumped over to Computer Center. See, so I got an opportunity to work there as a consultant and I directly took it. So it was more like a coincidence. Um, and at this point in time, I also started um, to speak at conferences. So I started to uh, write my own blog, to go to meetups, to speak at conferences about PowerShell. And this is also one strong recommendation I can give to all of my mentees. Just start writing, just start um, uh, getting in touch with other people, just start sharing your knowledge. Um, also be wrong. You will be wrong at some point in time. Don't don't care. Um, also, um, the real good thing and value of speaking at a conference is you you create pressure for yourself. Um, I mean, you are out of your comfort zone um, everyone knows it. Um, um, you don't want to get any questions which you are not able to answer. <laughs> so, so you prepare a lot, I mean, you learn a lot, you prepare a lot. Um, and I'm telling all, all of the people, hey, just pick topics you love to do or you would like to do. You will not be the expert in the world, but you might be the expert in the room and maybe someone in the room will be learning something from it. And then you already have accomplished something valuable and everything else is for you. So everything else is growing yourself. Um, and I started doing this and it was crazy. I mean, the first time on stage, I was um, really bad. <laughs> so it was uh, a little bit frustrating. And um, I mean, there were 100 people. I was not used to speak in front of 100 people. I was like totally stressed out. Um, but over time, I got better. I mean, the more times I've spoken, um, I also, I, I got to know, okay, um, the audience, they are also normal people. Um, they will not um, laugh at me, even if I'm wrong sometimes. They, they are actually very kind. Um, and then it made fun. And sometimes um, the demos, they didn't work. Uh, the demo got a typical issue, but, but sometimes you get used to it and then you make fun out of it. Um, and then the presentations went better. Um, and I received an offer from Microsoft afterward. 
um, um, to um, submit my application. I mean, in that in that time, I was like, okay, Microsoft, this is the the the, the final company I want to join. I mean, I was uh, grown up with Microsoft products. Um, and I thought about, okay, what might get wrong? Huh? Uh, just submit my application. And four weeks later, I had the offer on my table. Hey, David, uh, we liked you very much. Um, do you want to work with us? And I was like, oh. And th this was, I think, um, it was very close to each other. I mean, I was um, not even leaving the probation time, uh, the third time in a row. Um, then I moved over to Microsoft. And Microsoft was a really um, good place for me. So I really started growing. I um, was a um, premier field engineer. This is, you can imagine this is like the, um, the, the SWAT team for technical engineers. So we go to customers, we set up everything, we um, deliver workshops, which no one can deliver. We go to the customers, we fix issues, which no one can deliver, uh, fix. Um, these kind of things. And I started very quickly to jump into the Azure Windows and security domain, also together with PowerShell and automation. So this was all connected to each other. Um, I also was working in the cybersecurity field. So I was working with public sector customers, um, doing security assessments, um, providing um, red teaming training, providing blue teaming training, um, which was really interesting. So how do you harden an enterprise environment properly? Um, tough question. Um, and then um, I also started blogging at Microsoft and I had maybe luck, maybe not. Um, I just picked the things which I was working on a daily basis. And I thought like, if I might be um, solving these things for one customer, which no one has solved before, maybe it will be also valuable for other customers. So I started blogging um, and out of a sudden I had a blog um, with 200, 250k views. Um, official MSDN blog um, and um, things went crazy. Um, um, I had quite good reputation and everything was fine. Um, and I was growing. Um, at some point in time, I think after two and a half years, um, um, I received uh, um, uh, an, a mail or whatever from Google. Um, they were building up the Google Cloud in Munich um, and were searching for people to build up the professional services team. Um, and I thought like, mm, maybe this might be something for me, maybe not. Actually, I was very happy at Microsoft. So I was in my comfort zone again at Microsoft. And I was thinking like, do I want to leave my comfort zone? I know all the people, I know who to ask. I have my reputation, everything is working fine. My career is working fine. Google, I don't know anyone. I don't know um, if I will succeed. I don't know um, how things will progress. I don't know Google Cloud. Um, and then it was a really tough decision for me. And then again, I thought about myself. I'm telling to my mentees all the time, hey, jump out of your comfort zone. So I also needed to jump out of my comfort zone. I jumped over to Google. Um, Google was fine. I built up um, together with the professional services team the the uh, Munich um, um, setup, um, and then afterward I moved more into the direction of management. So I switched from Google to uh, Munich Re as a, a lead architect. The idea was. Um, um, I had a, a good friend of mine and he told me if you want to jump into management at, point, at some point in time, you also need to do architecture at some point in time. Um, and then I took the challenge with um, Munich Re, which was very nice. And also I've been building up a community at Munich Re with more than 500 people. Um, so this was one accomplishment at Munich Re. And um, afterward, I've, I was always thinking about um, becoming a CIO or CTO, like um, managing the whole IT environment. Um, and um, a good old um, customer from mine came, came to me and asked me, hey, do you want maybe to work with us? Um, you could start as a principal engineer in the cloud field, and maybe um, you can jump to a management area at some point in time. Um, and I jumped over to MediaMarkt Saturn. And after six months, I was head of computing. Um, so I was leading 40 people with um, 40 million uh, euro budget. Um, I was managing the whole cloud area, the whole stores, um, API management, um, primarily everything IT. Um, and this was really nice. We have been, dri dri we have been driving a lot of, um, I would say, um, 
um, IT um, innovations and also new projects and new initiatives. Um, and um, at some point in time, I was feeling like, okay, being the CIO is nice and fine, or being an IT lead is nice and fine. But <clears throat> the one issue is you will only be working with one customer. So we, you will only be improving one customer. And I thought about moving back to consultancy. So I switched over to Paxon. And at Paxon, um, we, we have been building up the, the startup. So this was like a, a cloud consultancy startup. Um, we recognized it worked very well. And then Florian and myself decided, okay, we want to do this on our own. And now um, we uh, founded Shift Avenue. And the main idea for Shift Avenue is we want to set up a place for all the high performers um, and aspiring high performers. So high performers are the passionate, ambitious people. Um, to work together in one company and to deliver real value for customers. Yeah. Very interesting. I could <laughs> spend the entire rest of time just listening to your experiences. Uh, yeah. Quite, quite intriguing. Um, so many pockets of uh, valuable information, uh, so many avenues that we could actually go into in terms of um, taking this conversation. But within the interest of time, um, you also made something very important, and it's the fact that in building your career, in terms of moving forward, then it's very good to uh, jump outside of your comfort zone, and that cannot be re-emphasized. And as yeah. you mentioned, the fact that when I started out, I also know what it felt like to be um, working from the help decks or support or ticket decks or that sort of system. And it's, it seems so synonymous with the fact that a number of persons who have actually excelled, I mean, reaching to the point of becoming CISOs, all of these, started at that level. Yeah. And that's what I constantly see to other persons who are trying to um, get into the industry is that the ideal position or the ideal job title that you're looking for is not always the case. Always get yourself inside the door. Yeah. As you have actually mentioned, you started at that level to where you are now. And I I, I was just there smiling when I thought about <laughs> the many days when I felt like tearing my hair out of my head at the help desk. Everybody <laughs> screaming at you when the system is down. But guess what? It's built my level of resilience to be able to speak with customers, to, to um, be able to know, to listen, that empathy as we go along, that has helped me to move from just help decks, in your case, to various levels, managerial levels. So that's a very good point to, to make mention of. Yeah. I mean, the, the, the one thing that um, has been driving me um, the, the overall career is um, um, a, a good talk, which is really recommendable viewing is from Adam Grant, um, Taker and Giver. And um, I always recommend my mentees to be giver. Um, so just give and share and help people without expecting anything in return. So they are giver, taker, and matcher. And typically um, um, the, the givers they um, will um, uh, provide a lot of value to many people. Um, sometimes they get exhausted, um, but if you are cleverly giving to the people, it will be very valuable for you. So this is what I always recommend. Um, and um, for the cybersecurity domain, you already mentioned it. I think one really good recommendation for, the, for your listeners is um, start with the basics so the basics need to be really there so you need to learn the basics you cannot avoid the basics um, at some point in time you also need to learn the models you don't need to know everything i mean um, if you are an expert in one single domain um, even the experts don't know anything but you need to know the the basics and the models um, and then um, always uh, providing value to the customer if you have this in mind then you will just um, provide um, valuable work to the customers. Certainly. And that's uh, a very good note for us to actually end um, our conversation on. I mean, it has been a very, very valuable, insightful, I mean, conversation, quite condensed. But before we actually um, conclude our conversation, what mm -hmm. it is, I mean, what's that, I mean, one, special advice that you would want to give to someone who 
aspire to be where you are. <laughs> yeah, it's very interesting. I mean, I've been asked uh, a lot of times, so many people um, uh, admire me, but actually what I'm doing is I'm just um, doing what I do. I mean, um, um, I help people and I openly share my thoughts. Um, I'm wrong sometimes um, and you should also be open to be wrong. You should get a feedback. This is really important. Um, and um, you should uh, really press yourself to go out of the comfort zone. Um, so start working, start blogging, start speaking on stages, start connecting. Um, don't be ashamed. Um, um, there was never the perfect speaker on stage uh, from the first day. Um, so this is my one thing I give to everyone. Um, always share your thoughts, share your valuable knowledge and um, um, just go out of your comfort zone. I think this is the most important thing. Awesome. So David, that was indeed an awesome conversation and <laughs> I really enjoyed it and I look forward to many more um, coming, uh, conversations like this. So Perfect. until then, stay tuned, stay connected for all future recordings on the Cyber JA show with me, your host, uh, Richie Perry. Perfect.